Good morning. This is Brenda Salzano. I am a surface pattern designer. I also multimedia, but today it's another sewing uh, lesson and just showing how to make a new design that I'm going to have on a fat quarter and it's going to be for sales. A lot of people have these whirly gigs, the little boats. <clears throat> of course, the boat would be down here. And a lot of them occasionally have to replace the sails. And so I've made a design to sell on Spoonflower. And it'll have different designs on each sail. And you just cut them out and sew them up. And so this is what the sail looks like. It's a double-sided, so it's two fabrics. And when you get it on the fat quarter, it will look like this. And then you're going to, um, <clears throat> of course, the sail then will be folded in half. And I also, I've added a little twine, which is hidden inside of the sail. It also has this opening all up run down here for the mast. So there's a little opening there for the mast to go through. So this is how you make this little sail. And you want to start out with folding the right sides together and you can iron that down or just press it with your hand. On the Spoonflower site, I sell it as a canvas. There's different kinds of canvas and I'll pick one of those to suggest, but you can put print it out on anything. I just find that this canvas will last longer. And I believe this is the cotton linen canvas, but I'm not sure. I'll look that up and put it in details later. Anyway, so we have this all together. You have your rough edges here. And then you have the mass side, which is straight. And the fir first thing that I'm going to do first, though, is um, I'm going to hem this bottom. <clears throat> it's approximately 11 inches. And I'm going to hem this just about, oh, half an inch, probably a half an inch wide. And with this, just a regular stitch, I'm just going to stitch this little hem on the bottom. And here's the hem. And you'll see that it's sticking out just a little bit hit here on the, the corners, both corners. Just trim that off. Oops, excuse me. I'm dropping my scissors. <clears throat> I had been asked uh, for the second time, actually. There was a really unique um, whirly gig with some hand mode, handmade, excuse me, ships on it. And it had sails and it was all tattered here in the apartments where I live. And so I offered to um, fix the sails because they were all tattered and torn. And it was such a neat looking whirly gig with the four sailboats. And it would go different directions around, two going one direction, two going the other direction. And so they were glad to have someone who wanted to do that. So I tackled that one. And now I've been asked again by somebody else who has this exact same um, whirly gig to replace the sails and um, spruce it up a bit. So that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay, I've got my hem in. Back to putting these two sides together. Excuse my scratchy throat. <clears> throat> Next thing I want to do is, I oh, and I already have some twine, which I'll get here in a minute to show you how that goes in. But first, I'm just going to sew the rough edges, where the two edges in and across this top. You'll see that's a little flat area. So I'm just going to use like a small, what is that? It's a one-eighth, one-eighth seam. Now you can put the twine in before you Sew this by putting it on the inside or on the right side of the fabric, sewing it up. But I'm going to do this a little different this time just for the video's sake and not have so much time involved. 
be sure and go straight across on that top area. And I do that like two or three or four times because that's where that little metal mask place will go. <clears throat> so I've, I've sewn up this edge and across the top. Cutting off any extra areas. I also try to trim on this area here, I'm going to trim across this. So that when I turn it inside out, there's not so much bulk at the top. I see a fat area here too. I'm gonna to trim that off. This really is a nice material to work with. And you wash it, especially after you wash it one time. It limbers up a little bit. It's really heavy duty. It holds the colors of the design on it really nice. I'm really happy with Spoons Flowers new denim products. Then you have to turn this inside out. It's not too hard. You do need to have a pencil for the last part. So I just kind of start working it out with my fingers inside. And I just keep working that, turning that out as I'm going along. And I get as far as I can <clears throat> with just my fingers. And then I get a pencil. And you can use the racer head or the pencil part I have really dull on this one so I'm going to use the pencil part on the end and press out the top of this sail just go slow don't get frustrated it, it, you, you can't do these things real fast <clears throat> I think I saw some kind of a tool that you can reach down in and it grabs. I can't remember what it was called now. It probably was a dental tool or something. It was real thin and long and you could grab down inside and then pull up on the from the outside in. I'd like to have one of those. For now, I make do with chopsticks and pencils. And I have to turn things in inside out. We're getting there. Remember, you don't just poke in one spot. You have to keep twisting it, turning it, and kind of looking at it. Until I have kind of a point there. So even though it looked like it was pretty straight across. By the time you turn this out, it's more like a point up there. You can see there. Point. And then you want to make sure that you get your seams. I lay it down to do this. And you just have to press with your fingers. Press this now normally. If you're doing this at home, I suggest ironing at this point. <clears throat> As you can see how this looks. And you'll see a little extra thing that needs to be clipped there. So I'm going to trim that back. And, uh, so that you don't have it hanging out there. Let me get my twine. And I'm using actual twine instead of just like a nylon. I find this lasts longer than the jute. It's called twine jute. It's a natural raw fiber. And you can, um, if you make any knots onto the boat, you can also add some quick glue to make the knot stay. But this, we're kind of sewing in some of it. You're going to leave the majority of it on the outside. But this, we're going to take a little bit. That's probably about, what, two inches? And I'm gonna put it on the inside. <clears throat> and I'm gonna sew it 
you see on the inside, I'm gonna hold this in there and then when I put this down and then I'm gonna sew across here. However, the big thing is, you see where this finger is here? We wanna leave this much, like a thumbnail uh, width for the mass to go down. So we don't wanna go clear across here. We're gonna stop right there. And we're gonna make sure that when I sew it, I'm catching that rope down in there. Now you can make this like a snake where it goes like an S thing. I don't know if you can see that and go across it that way if you don't think you can sew right on it, whichever way you think will work best. The main thing is to have this tail hanging out, which will attach to the boat and give you lots to work with when you're attaching your whole sail on. Coming in my fourths of an inch or more. I'm going to go right across that previous hem. I'm going to make sure that this all gets sewed up right there where I'm going to be sewing along that hem. <clears throat> Do it back and forth when you start to to make sure that that firms up that entrance way for the mast. And I go back and forth a couple times when I get to the rope part. So that I'm really sewing that in there well too. And especially right at the last, like when you get to the end, you do that back and forth like three or four times. That way it's snug in there, it's not gonna be coming out. And that does it. Now mine's all wrinkly because I haven't ironed it. As you can see, now we have, it's easy to tell which is going to go towards the stern because the flat side is the front of the boat. But this will be the back of the boat with your little tie. So that's how you do it. And then, oh, we forgot one step. I have, to, I have to stitch down this whole side like this one is. <clears throat> one more step. So on this, from the top down now, we make that little tube holding thing. And it again, you're going to come back in about a fingernail side and just go down that straight side. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. I think that says about... Ooh, Three-eighths. I like to give it plenty of room because you don't know how much someone else's mask, how wide it's going to be. Most of them use those little metal bars. Cutting my threads. Oh, that's an important part. I won't forget that. When it comes on the fat quarter, these are gonna be really easy for people with wordy gigs. So just if they need a, a replacement, they can go in and, and get it on the fat quarter and make it themselves in no time. You can tell that we did this and it took very little time. So now you can see where I sewed down. Sewed there. This left this hole open because we hemmed it first, right? So now this, let me see with the pencil. See, it's open now for an, a wide enough for a pencil to go up. And that goes all the way to the top. And then we have this part here. Now you could sew down this side too, it just for looks. If you wanted to sew down that whole front side, uh, you could do that, but you don't have to. Anyway, that's it. That's the little sale. And I will have these things up in my spoon shop pretty soon and, and provide some links later on too and have it on my Instagram account. 
Hope you enjoy this little video and that it helps you to make some sales for your whirly gigs. Have a good day.